another testimony we received from an online member last week. By the way, we are so grateful when we hear from you. And um, this one is from Mercy. What a great name, Mercy. Hi, Pastor JD. My name is Mercy. I am an online member. Today, on my bike ride on the bike trail, I met an 18-year-old named Nick. We talked about college and what he wants to be. He wants to be an attorney. I asked him if he was a Christian. He said he was an atheist. So I said, did you know (laughs) to be an atheist, you have to first believe there is a God in order not to believe? That's really good. I'm, I'm using that. I'm stealing that. We had a really long talk and I was thinking about Waxman and you. You know who the Waxman is, right? None other than Barry McGuire. <laughs> Praying silently, I was asking the Lord to help me to move Nick a little closer to Jesus. Now let me explain that before I, I go on any further. Um, when we had the privilege of having Barry McGuire come here and share Uh, it was so freeing. And I always know I've heard truth when I'm freed by it. And conversely, I know that I've not heard truth when I'm bound. I mean, the truth will set you free, and whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And Jesus said, my burden is light and my yoke is easy. John said, the commands of the Lord are not burdensome. So when somebody lays a really heavy trip on me, It's probably not the Lord, because James says that the wisdom from above is easy to be entreated. It's reasonable. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. So when, as I got, as I got to know Barry, he, he began to really challenge me and encourage me to share my faith more one-on-one, because you have to understand that from behind the pulpit, it's so much easier. You have no idea. But boy, out from behind the safety of this pulpit and the, you know, exclusivity of this microphone, uh, one-on-one, it's a whole different ballgame. And this is the greatest fear that we have as Christians when it comes to sharing our faith. And it is from, from the enemy, because of course the enemy doesn't want you sharing your faith, right? So he puts this this fear in you, this pressure on you. Man, you you better lead them to Christ. If if they don't pray the sinner's prayer, you failed. Don't bother. And so we don't. Right? So this is one of the reasons why I believe God brought Barry McGuire into my life, and I've shared him with you, of course. He just says, you know, Just move them, move everyone every day closer to Jesus. Because how do you know that you're not just the one planting the seed? We talked about this last week a little bit. And or maybe you're watering the seed that somebody else has already planted. Or maybe God will give you the profound privilege to harvest that soul and lead them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I'm, going to, I'm here to tell you, and you, th- those of you who have led people to Christ know exactly what I'm talking about when I say this. There is no high like the high of leading somebody to Christ. I've, I've, I'm not proud of this. I've done a lot of drugs in my life before coming to Christ, and there is no high. This is a spiritual high, and that's the way God designed us again. So when I realize, hey, you know what? I don't have to like, you know, close the deal. (laughs) I don't have to make the sale. And that's another thing, by the way, that the Lord's had to deal with me personally about. And I'll put this on myself. You know, there's this, this uh, is spiritual pride, I think. Because, you know, it's another notch on our salvation belt. It's another sale on the board. And I come from that background. And it's high pressure sales. And we we care more about making the sale than we do about winning the soul, if I can say it that way. And so it just, my whole paradigm shifted. My whole, I mean, it just changed everything. There's no more pressure. All I have to do 
is let them see Jesus in me, because they already want to see and know Jesus, because that's the way God created them. So when you're out and about, whether it's on a bike ride (laughs) or in the store wearing your mask, (laughs) it's hard to, you know, I try to smile at people and they can't see that I'm smiling. (laughs) I've saved a lot of money on breath mints, by the way, because it doesn't matter anymore. (laughs) I'm sorry, it's, I know they have medical conditions for this, but speaking of medical. (laughs) But sometimes it's the on the phone with that tech support or customer support individual that's really having a bad day. Can you imagine what they go through? The kind of mean, especially now, you know, somebody's been on hold for 30 minutes and I mean, that happened to me recently. And I, I just, you know, She's like, she, she takes the call and she was already sheepish. She's like, hello, my name is, can I help you? I could just tell she had been, you know, through the ringer. I just said, you know, thank you for taking my call. I can't even imagine, uh, you know, what you must go through uh, during the day with so many angry customers. I just want you to know I'm not going to be one of those angry customers today. You could almost hear him, like, you know, starting to cry on the other end of the phone. And all I'm doing is sort of (laughs) setting them up, because at the end of that call, I'll say something to the effect of, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray and ask God to bless the rest of your day. And all I've done is move them closer to Jesus. That's all you have to do. Just move them closer to Jesus. Well, that's what she did. She said, I actually got to the ABCs of salvation and I knew them by heart. I was so happy. I'm going to tell you something. You've been coming to this church or watching online for any length of period of time and you don't know these by heart yet. We need to lay hands on you or something. I don't know. He said he would start, listen to this, by picking up his Bible again. I was telling him about your Bible prophecy updates, and as soon as we started looking you up on his phone, it came to your videos right away. Poor guy, I'm so sorry about that. (laughs) I'm so glad Jesus put it on my heart to take that bike ride way out in the woods today. Have a blessed day, and thank you for always sharing those ABCs of salvation you never know how they're going to move someone closer to Jesus. So that's how I want to end, if you just give me a couple more minutes. The ABCs of salvation are in no way meant to insult anyone's intelligence. It's just a childlike, simple explanation of salvation. Jesus said you must become like a child in order to enter the kingdom of God. Not childish, childlike. What Jesus was saying was, is that like a child, very trusting. You know how children, when they're young, they're very, they're too trusting, which is why we have to talk to them about stranger danger, because they're too trusting. That's what Jesus is saying. You need to come with that childlike trust. So it's childlike simple. The A is for admit or acknowledge that you've sinned and that you need the Savior Romans 3.10 says, there is no one righteous, not even one. You might be a good person, but you'll never be good enough. And Romans 3.23 tells us why. It's because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 is interesting because, if I can say it this way, it sort of packages the bad news first with the good news. And I think it's good to know the bad news first because, and I know this isn't proper English, so don't email me, but the badder the bad news is, the gooder the good news will be. This is really bad news. You know what the bad news is? The wages of sin is death. It's the death penalty. Wait a minute, you just got done telling me that all have sinned. Yeah, that's the point. So are are you saying that everyone who was born is born a sinner? Yes. 
And you're saying that everyone who was born, that's born as a sinner, has already been sentenced to death? Yes. That's really bad. I know. That's the point. We've all broken God's law, His perfect law. We've all transgressed. We've all fallen short of His glory. That's the bad news. You ready for the good news? I am. (laughs) The good news is this. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here's how it works. So we've been sentenced to death for all eternity because all have sinned, right? So here we are in the courtroom of eternity, and we're standing before the judge of the universe, and he asks us to enter a plea. And what is our plea? Guilty as charged. And now we're going to enter the sentencing phase. What's the sentence? The death sentence. And then in walks a man. No ordinary man. This is the God man, Jesus the Christ. And he walks into that courtroom of eternity and says to the judge of the universe, stop, hold everything. I will go to his death, her death, in his, her place, for them instead of them. And then the judge looks at you and says, oh, because it's a local judge. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. That was bad, I know. You have to, for our online church, you have to be here in Hawaii to understand that one. That was an inside one. But he just looks at you and says, man, good news. Your death sentence has been paid. You are free to go. That's what the word gospel means. Good news. Your debt is paid. You're free to go. That's the gospel. Here's the B. The B is for believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. This is Romans 10, 9 and 10. It says, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. And then lastly, the C is for call upon the name of the Lord, or as Romans 10, 9 and 10 also says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And here's why, verse 10. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. Hang on to that word for just a second. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. I love this word justified. Here's why. It's one of those words that sounds like what it is. I'm justified. You know what that means? It's just if I'd never sinned. Yeah. I'm justified. Just if I'd never sinned. Because when Jesus went to that cross and paid in full, purchased the gift that he offers every single one of us. What he was doing was he was paying for and removing our sins as far as the east is from the west. And as Isaiah says, God remembers them no more. How about that? I'm justified. It's just if I'd never sinned. God, when He sees you, He does not see your sin. He sees His Son. And then lastly, Romans 10, 13. I love this. For me, it was a January night on the mainland, 38 years ago, when I called upon the name of the Lord and was saved. All who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Why don't you all stand? We'll pray. Thank you for your patience today.